What we're going to talk about today is um, something called deep video cl classification, which is a key part of our technology. Every caching solution out there, um, one of the key things that they need to do is the ability to actually classify the data that they're about to cache. With video, that becomes um, quite a challenge. The ability to actually classify objects correctly is one of the most important aspects of any caching solution. The reason is if you can't classify the objects correctly, you're basically reducing your caching efficiency, which is what the customers pay the caching vendors for. Now with video, that becomes doubly important. If we look at the first generation of uh, video content, it was mostly composed of user-generated uh, videos from sites like YouTube and Dailymotion. And the type of files that was used there was something um, called progressive download. What progressive downloads mean is that the consumer is able to watch the video even before it's, it's fully downloaded to their computer, but the video is still one big sequential file. Legacy caching technologies were using a method called object checksum to identify whether one video and a second video actually belong to the same video. Now, if this um, object here represents a full video file, what they would do is they would look at the first segment of the file and perform something known as um, checksum calculation on the first typically 32 kilobytes of the file. When a second file comes down the wire in a, in a similar manner, they would run the same calculation again. If the result is equal between the two calculation, the meaning is that these two files actually are the same and they belong to the same video, say a Batman video. Over the last few years, we've seen a major advancement in video. Instead of just watching user-generated content, such as was the case uh, about five years ago, we're now seeing more and more videos um, that are of the long-form videos um, containing content which can be a full TV episode or an actual uh, full-length film. Now the technology that is used to deliver those videos is something known as ABR or adaptive bitrate. The meaning of ABR is that instead of using one sequential file, as was done with uh, the user-generated content, content providers are actually now encoding um, the video into multiple bit rates, such as high definition and standard definition. Each of these bit rates is then broken down into different chunks. So instead of having one big file, the movie would be now broken into hundreds or even thousands of little chunks, each one several seconds in length. The reason why this is done is that the client is actually able to shift in real time between different bit rates. Say if, for instance, the, the quality of uh, the line is hampered for some reason, the client can then go from a high definition version to a low definition and then back to a high definition again. Now, you may ask yourself, how does that impact the efficiency of, um, of caching. If in the past you only needed to do one calculation per video file and that would account for the entire uh, length of the video, now caching solutions have to perform thousands of calculations for each video file since the videos are now broken into different chunks. The more serious impact in terms of the efficiency of caching is actually um, somewhere else in the implementation. When two different subscribers want to watch the same content, but they're, they're viewing it on different clients, what may happen is that the files would be broken down into different chunks. For the first client, they could be broken down into chunks that are two seconds in length. For client number two, which could be accessing it from a different um, client, say an Xbox, they would be broken down into five second length. If you were to try to perform a checksum calculation like you did in a uh, progressive download method, what would happen is that the cache would think that it's actually seeing different content types because this file is obviously different than this file, even though they belong to the same video. The impact of both of these challenges, one, the multiple calculations that are now needed for every video, and two, the fact that, multiple video, that the same video can be broken down into different chunks, reduces the efficiency of existing caching solutions considerably. We've seen that at Quilt, and we were able to architect a different solution, one that utilizes a, a deeper technology, which we call deep video classification, and is actually able to efficiently handle both ABR content as well as progressive download content and still achieve very high caching efficiency levels. So let's take a look at how this deep video classification actually works. Technology that we've developed at Quilt allows us to classify content at layer 7. 
What this technology allows us to do is to create a unique fingerprint that is assigned to every video and determine that even different chunks of the same video belong to the same title. Now let's take a look at how we do that. What we see here is an example of two HTTP messages that belong to a video file. What our deep video classification technology does is we look at specific characteristics inside that HTTP packet. For instance, this field here, and that field there, and this field there. We combine those, those several fields, and every single video site has what we call a different um, video signature. And we create what we call a CID, or a content identifier. So we use that CID for next chunks of that same video flowing through the system. We know how to allocate them, and we know that they belong to one video file. The reason why that is important is that with this technology, with deep video classification, Quilt is actually able to achieve 50% caching efficiency for all video content, be it adaptive bitrate or progressive download. Legacy caching solutions are only able to do around 15% for adaptive bitrate video, and at the end of the day, it's all about the cache efficiency. Ultimately, that is what you as the operator are paying for.